Hi, this is George, and you're watching The Return of the King channel. Every time I see what I believe could be the final sign of the rapture, and even possibly the day of the rapture, I ask God repeatedly, is this it or is there more? I've gotten answers. No, you're not looking out far enough. Look at the eclipses. Keep going out farther. No, keep going. That's how I found the April 8th eclipse that completed my dream of the race in Egypt, well over a year in advance of April 8th, 2024. In my previous video, I gave a brief explanation as to why I'm looking at the last day of tabernacles, also known as Shimini Atzeret for the day of the rapture. Since that video, I got an answer. That's what this video is about. A word of warning first. Everything I share with you is my interpretation of the Bible, the story in the heavens, and the supernatural events I've experienced. God tests us to see if things don't work out the way we think they should. Do we continue to have faith in him and trust him, or do we abandon him? This will be no different. If we're still here after Shimini Atzeret, we just need to be patient and wait on the Lord. In this journey, he's come through every single time with new revelation. Here's what happened. On Sunday evening, October 6th, at bedtime, I was asking God to show me if Shimini Atzeret is the day or not. How he's going to do it is up to him. However it's done, I'll understand it. When I go to bed, I put in earbuds and listen to the Bible on an app known as Dwell. For the last few months, I've been listening to the Psalms. So while I was sitting on my bed, I asked the Holy Spirit, what should I listen to? I get the sense it's Chronicles. No voices, just the sense in my spirit. The first 15 chapters are genealogies, so I start at chapter 16. I set the timer on the app to turn off after 15 minutes. I go to bed at 11 p.m. I fall asleep, then I wake up at a little after 4 a.m. I get up, take a hot shower, which helps me sleep, I then go back to bed and I turn the app back on and continue to listen. I fell back to sleep pretty fast with no timer, so the app is reading the Bible to me up until the time I wake up. I sleep solidly until I awaken at 7.30. The very first verse I hear as I awaken is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 8. At that time, Solomon held the feast for seven days and all Israel with him a very great assembly from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day, they held a solemn assembly, for they had kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their homes, joyful and glad of heart for the prosperity that the Lord had granted to David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. The moment I heard the eighth day, I woke up real fast, grabbed my phone to see what verse was being read. The verses you see here. That night, I was expecting an answer from God. The question I asked God was, is what we're seeing on the calendar and in the heavens, pointing to the rapture on Shimini Atzeret. How it's done would be left up to God. I found six occurrences of the eighth day in the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths. There may be more, but it's not that important. There are just over 31,000 verses in the Bible, so there's about a 1 in 5,000 chance of this being a mere coincidence. Of the six instances I found, this was by far the number one choice to answer my question. This is because of the last verse. The 23rd day of the seventh month is the day after Shimini Atzeret. They went home joyful and glad of heart. That's how we're going to feel the day after the rapture. Shimini Atzeret is an unusual day. None of the Jewish rabbis are sure as to why there even is a Shimini Atzeret. Most of the Jewish holidays commemorate a historical event, like the flight from Egypt, or focus the faithful on some worthwhile, daunting goal like atonement. Not so for Shimini Atzeret. No one is sure how or why there even is a Shimini Atzeret. Rabbis have been arguing for centuries about what the name even means. That's because no one really knows what the word Atzeret means. It's usually translated as assembly or gathering, and it may be derived from the verb Atzar, which means to stop, to pause, or to keep in. 
But generally today, Atzeret is considered to mean a solemn gathering. Maybe they don't know the meaning of Shemini Atzeret because it's about a future event, the rapture. The blood moon tetrad of 2014 and 2015 appears to be telling us the feast to be looking for at the rapture, tabernacles. The last blood moon of the blood moon tetrad occurs on tabernacles in the constellation of the Christian, the fish. The symbol of the Christian from the beginning has been the fish. It occurs 726 days before the Revelation 12 sign, the sign of the coming rapture. In Strong's Greek Concordance, each word is given a number. The number given to the word harpazo is 726. The word rapture is derived from the Greek word harpazo. Even contained within the number 726 is an element of the rapture. The numerical value of the name of God in Hebrew is 26. The rapture is patterned after a Jewish wedding, which lasts seven days. During the tribulation, we will be with God not seven days, but for seven years, celebrating our wedding with Christ, for we are the bride of the Lamb. It appears that the blood moon tetrad is telling us that on some future tabernacles, the Christian, whose symbol is the fish, will be raptured. The ancient Jewish rabbis believed the moon represented the Messiah. A blood moon then represents the atonement of Christ, Christ shedding his blood on the cross. There are seven blood moons. Those covered by the blood of Christ will be gone during the seven-year tribulation. The Jewish rabbis believed blood moons represented judgment coming to Israel, solar eclipses, judgment coming to the world. The Jewish religious leadership of the nation of Israel at this moment has rejected Christ as the Messiah. Since they are not covered, protected by the blood of Christ, they will experience the judgment of Christ during the seven-year tribulation. The last eclipse occurring in this series of eclipses having to do with the rapture and the wedding is a solar eclipse, a warning of judgment coming to the world, the wrath of God. But the bride of Christ is not destined for wrath and will be taken out prior to the start of the tribulation. It occurs in the constellation of our heavenly wedding, Gemini. The wedding begins when the bride is snatched away to heaven, what Christians call the rapture. Is this group of eclipses telling us that on the day of the rapture, in the constellation of Gemini, something should appear? Specifically on the Feast of Tabernacles, based on this eclipse and the day count to the Revelation 12 sign. It's now been just over seven years since the Revelation 12 sign appeared. God gave Pharaoh two dreams of a coming famine. None of the wise men of Egypt could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. But Joseph could and becomes the second highest leader in Egypt behind Pharaoh. The Revelation 12 sign appears to be a warning fashioned after that of Egypt, except this time it's not about a famine but the coming of the seven-year tribulation. In a previous video, I talked about Paul's shipwreck and the rapture. After they shipwreck on the island of Malta, they stay there for three months, and then they leave on a ship with the figurehead of Castor and Pollux, the constellation of Gemini. There are 276 people aboard the ship. Hidden within this number is the number of the rapture, 726. Just switch the first two numbers around. We don't need to know this unless it's important to some event in the future. Three in the Bible is the number of the resurrection. The last feast, Tabernacles, is the third feast and has yet to be fulfilled. After they set sail, they stay in Syracuse for three days. They then leave and arrive at Puteoli and stay with some brothers for seven days, the seven-year tribulation. The wedding in Cana, where Jesus turned the water into wine, occurred on the third day. A wedding on the third day. We're looking at the third feast for our wedding day. At Mount Sinai, God met with Israelites on the third day. It's on tabernacles that the Israelites would meet with God for the third and last time each year, the third feast. Revelation chapter 12 is about our escape from the red dragon via the rapture. In Revelation chapter 12, there is a war in the heavens related to our escape. We can't tell how the war affects the rapture from the text alone. Knowing what I know now, this is what I believe has happened. I believe the rapture should have occurred on the Feast of Trumpets, at the last trump. 
But there's a war in the heavens related to the rapture is found in Revelation chapter 12. At the time of Paul, the last trump was associated with the Feast of Trumpets. Many credible Bible scholars believe that Paul is telling us the Feast of the Rapture. Revelation chapter 12 is about our escape from the dragon via the rapture. It appears that the war delays the rapture 21 days, just like in Daniel's case. The response to Daniel's prayer was delayed 21 days because the angel delivering the response had to do battle with the prince of Persia. There's no reason for us to know this about Daniel unless it's going to affect a future event, in this case, the rapture. These delays only happen because God allows them. There are seven appointed times, three of which are feast days. Two of the three feast days have been fulfilled. On these three feast days, all males were required to attend. They are meetings with God. The first, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, was fulfilled at Christ's death. The second, Pentecost. In the Old Testament, it's known as the Feast of Weeks, was fulfilled by the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. The third and last feast is Tabernacles or Sukkot. It's a seven-day feast with an added extra day, Shimini Atz Aret. It now appears Tabernacles will be fulfilled by the rapture. The rapture is a meeting with God. In this case, we will all meet with Christ in the air. It's on the eighth day. Eight is the number of new beginnings in the Bible and it will be the last trump of the year on the religious calendar. So Paul is correct in both cases. On the very last day of the feast, this added day, Shimini Atzeret, which is not related to any event in Jewish history, we see the story of our escape from the red dragon as found in Revelation chapter 12. Gemini represents our heavenly wedding, which begins when the groom comes and snatches his bride away, the rapture. In Revelation chapter 12, the rapture is an escape from the red dragon. There's Mars, the red dragon, in the constellation of the wedding, next to the moon, representing the Messiah. Jupiter, representing Christ and his church, are between the horns of Taurus. Christ the judge, who will begin to pour out his wrath on the earth, soon after he takes his bride home to heaven for seven years. Just below the moon and Mars is Cancer, representing heaven, our home for the next seven years. If the tribulation begins this fall, Christ will return in seven years on Yom Kippur 2031. That's either the 26th or 27th of September, depending on the Jewish calendar being used. On Yom Kippur in 2031, we have a picture-perfect story of the return of Christ, That was covered in detail in the video appearing here. If Christ returns around September 26th, 27th, and 2031, that means a tribulation has to start around November 1st, 2024. The tribulation consists of two periods of 1,260 days. Subtracting two periods of 1,260 days from Yom Kippur 2031 brings us to Friday, November 1st, 2024. That means the rapture has to occur by this date if the second coming is to be in 2031. Each half of the tribulation is 1,260 days, three and a half prophetic years. If we subtract 1,260 days from Yom Kippur 2031, the midpoint of the tribulation will occur around the 14th or 15th of April 2028. At the midpoint of the tribulation, which is around April 14th, 2028, we find both Mars and Saturn in the constellation of the dragon in the sea. Both are symbols of the dragon. This is exactly what we should see. It's at the midpoint of the tribulation that the Antichrist desecrates the temple and declares himself to be God. Ken Johnson, talking about the Antichrist, says this, Leviathan, we see the seven-headed red dragon in the book of Revelation. All the ancient cultures in the Middle East, including Israel, Babylon, and the Arab peoples, had a concept of a seven-headed sea creature they all called Leviathan, which represented an evil empire that would appear at the end of time. From Job 41, the ancient rabbis believed that Leviathan was a terrible beast that was king of the children of pride and that he would make a covenant with many and break that covenant, not be a servant forever. Isaiah also talks about slaying the dragon that is in the sea. In that day, the Lord, with his hard and great and strong sword, 
will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. The prophet Joel tells us, The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. When we look at where the eclipses occur in the heavens and sometimes their pass on the earth, they tell a story. There's only one place in the Bible we are told of very specific signs that will appear in the heavens at some time in the future. That's in Revelation chapter 12. What's known as the Revelation 12 sign is the centerpiece of this series of eclipses, the story of the rapture. The story in the heavens is pictographic. As was the original Hebrew language, Jesus tells us he's the first and the last. In the Greek, the Alpha and the Omega. In the Hebrew, the Aleph and the Tav. The Aleph, a picture of an ox, and the Tav, a cross. Hebrew reads from right to left. At midnight from Jerusalem, on October 24th, the constellation Gemini, symbolizing our wedding in heaven, has just risen above the horizon. The moon, representing the Messiah, and Mars, the red dragon, are in the constellation of the heavenly wedding. In Revelation chapter 12, the rapture is an escape from the dragon. The dragon who wants to devour the male child, Christ and his bride. Just above Gemini, in the constellation of Taurus, a fierce ox, Christ the Judge, is the planet Jupiter, representing the male child, Christ and his bride. But there's more. Jupiter also represents God's throne room. In Revelation chapter 12, that's where we're taken at the rapture. Now, Jupiter is an interesting planet. It's a striped planet with a wound. Isaiah 53, 5 tells us he was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes we are healed. It's known as the king planet. In Revelation 12, 5, we read this. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and his throne. In Revelation 3, 21, Jesus says this. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures. Jupiter has four large moons that orbit the planet. They symbolize the four living creatures. The moons are named after their discoverer, Galileo. They are called the Galilean moons. Jesus was a Galilean. Jesus came from the town of Nazareth in Galilee. Jupiter has over 75 smaller moons that circle the planet. And I heard around the throne the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice. This is what these smaller moons represent. When we get raptured, where do we go? Revelation 12, 5, she gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and his throne. Jupiter represents Christ and his bride, the male child who's caught up to God and his throne. When we become believers, we become one with Christ. He is the head and we are the body, the body of Christ. Jupiter also represents Christ on his throne, surrounded by the four living creatures and thousands upon thousands of angels and then those of us who arrive with him, the groom taking his bride home to be with him for seven years as he begins to take his kingdom back from the ruler of this world, Satan. And just rising above the horizon is cancer, also representing heaven. Every little detail in the Bible is in there for a reason. In the parable of the ten virgins, the bridegroom is late in coming. He can come any time, but usually around sunset. Everything is more romantic around sunset. The rapture is patterned after a Jewish wedding. In this Jewish wedding, not only does the bride and her bridesmaid know the day, they know the hour, they know he's late. The late bridegroom comes at midnight. There can be a long period of time in which the bride doesn't know the exact time or date of the wedding. But at some point, she has to know. We know this from the parable of the ten virgins. We've been watching the signs in the heavens and on the earth for a very long time now. 
and they appear to be telling us the time is now. Shimini Atzeret begins at sunset on October 23rd. This is the view from Jerusalem. In the consolation of Ophicus, Christ, wrestling with the serpent to prevent him from getting the crown, is potentially the comet of the century. Venus, the bright morning star, which we are told in the book of Revelation, is Jesus, which has been in the constellation of Libra, the coming judgment, has now moved into Satan's kingdom, symbolized by the scorpion. Jesus is coming to take his kingdom back from the ruler of this world, the devil, Satan. The ancient Jewish rabbis associated the constellation of Libra with the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Tav. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, or in Hebrew, the Aleph and the Tav. In the previous slide, we saw Jupiter in the constellation of the Aleph, the Ox. The tribulation begins with the rider of the white horse, Christ whose bow is pointed at the scorpion. It is Christ who is coming to destroy the works of the devil. White, in this context, always denotes holiness. 90% of all the commentaries written in the 1800s or earlier have the rider of the white horse, the rider with the bow, as Christ. The story in the heavens of Christ coming to get his bride just prior to his pouring out his judgment on the earth completes on this day. The rapture has to occur sometime between the 23rd and around the 1st of November if the tribulation is to begin this year. At some point, the rapture has to happen. And right now, this appears to be it. For those of you who are regular viewers of my channel, everything I've ever talked about is pointing to this fall. In 2016, while out deer hunting, I was reading Genesis, and I got the sense that when I finished reading, a deer would come. I kept blowing it off as my own imagination, but the thoughts kept coming. Within moments of finishing Genesis, I hear this rushing sound going through the woods. This sound stops 20 yards from me. Three deer, I'm in total shock. We're looking at the third feast. Fast forward to last year, 2023. I go out bow hunting three times. The first day, I see nothing. The second day out, I call a deer to me. I've gotten very good at doe calling. Both does and bucks will come to a doe call. The problem is they come too close. They stop directly underneath me, making it hard to shoot. On this day, I'm using a crossbow. As the deer begins to move away, I take my shot, but I didn't realize I had gotten too close with the bow to the tree I'm in, and one of the limbs on the crossbow hits the tree, causing me to miss. The third time out is October 15th. There are three feast days in the Bible. They always start on the 15th day of the month, the 15th day of the first month, the 15th day of the third month, the 153 fish, and the 15th day of the seventh month which is the start of the Feast of Tabernacles. On this day, I go back to where the three deer came through the woods in 2016. I get up in my stand and I make one doe call. Within 30 seconds, three deer, three does come walking right to me. I think of the doe call as the trumpet of God calling us home. On November 9, 2020, my son and I have four dreams. His first dream is just an eight and then an eight, eight, eight. 888 is the numerical value of the name of Jesus in Greek, which you can read about here just by pausing the video. The number 8 in the Bible is that of new beginnings. Christ rose from the dead on the 8th day. We are looking at the 8th day of tabernacles, Shimini Atzeret for the rapture, a new beginning. His next dream that night is that of the rapture. He's in a room and he begins to float up into the air. In my first dream that night, I'm in a safari-style theme park. We are going around the park in vehicles like the one you see here. There are billboard signs all over the park saying the rapture is coming soon. This is the year we are seeing all the signs in the heavens coming to completion, including the dreams. The next dream I have is that of a war, like the war you see in the first Wonder Woman movie that occurs on the beach. Arrows being shot with bows are flying all over the place. I retrieve three of the enemy's arrows. The number three keeps showing up over and over again. The tips of the arrows look like the obelisk found in Egypt to deify the pharaohs, to turn them into gods. Both Washington, D.C. and the Vatican have obelisks like the one in Egypt. They will be used to deify the Antichrist and the false prophet. Think of demonic possession. 
The tips have markings on them. Two of the three are identical. One is different. There is a war in the heavens. Satan and his angels versus Michael and his angels. That war has to do with the rapture. There are three arrows, just like the three deer. The wedding in Cana was on the third day. God met with the Israelites at Mount Sinai on the third day. There were three solar eclipses over America, two total eclipses and one ring of fire. Two are the same, one is different. The pass of the eclipses over America formed the Aleph and the Tav in Hebrew, the Alpha and the Omega in Greek. Jesus in the book of Revelation tells us he is the Alpha and the Omega and that he is coming soon. This dream symbolizes the war in the heavens with the dragon. In 2016, I had a very specific dream of a tabernacle's rapture. In 2017, I did a video on the dream which can be viewed here. In this dream, I was in a large field walking down a dirt road. Someone begins shooting at me. I run to an open field. In the middle of the field are white boxes stacked neatly in a group. They're like booths, rectangular boxes, little phone booths. On the boxes was written PS 108. I hide behind the boxes. Someone runs like the Flash in the Marvel movies and snatches away one of the boxes. The boxes in the dream symbolize booths, and Tabernacles is also known as the Feast of Booths. The person running in the dream and snatching away one of the booths is symbolic of the rapture, when Christ will snatch us away to heaven. The writing, P.S. 108, is Psalm 108. The key verses are, That your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer me. Verse 7 talks about the Valley of Sukkot. Tabernacles is also known as Sukkot. At the Exodus, this is one of the stops on the way to the Red Sea. The arch enemy of the Israelites was the people of Edom. Edom means red. Our enemy in Revelation chapter 12 is the red dragon. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Our foe is the red dragon who wants to devour us. But before he can, we are raptured out to God and his throne. On September 2nd, 2017, I released this video on the movie Passengers. In this movie, Jim, played by Chris Pratt, is a type of Christ. He's going to give his life for the woman he loves, Aurora, and for everyone else who is in deep hibernation sleep, as this trip lasts 120 years. The ship is damaged by a hit from a large asteroid. This causes Jim to be the only one awakened, some 90 years too early. He's lonely, so he awakens Aurora. He can repair the damage to the ship, but it will most likely cost him his life. He dies repairing the ship, and Aurora retrieves him from space and places him on a robotic medical table that may be able to revive him. But she needs a code to use the table. When I was watching the movie, I got the sense I need to watch for some particular number. That number is the number used to bring him back to life. That number is 2317. The movie was released nine months and two days prior to the Revelation 12 sign. The Revelation 12 sign completed on 92317. The rapture begins with the resurrection of the dead. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The number of passengers and crew in deep sleep is 5,258. The number in Strong's Concordance for sleep is 5,258. But there's more. I just found this today. The number of days from the opening of the movie to the Revelation 12 sign is 276 days. The same number as the number of passengers on Paul's shipwreck. Contained within this number is the number of the rapture. Just switch the first and second digits around. On August 21st, I go to see what movies I can watch on Prime Video. The third most watched movie on that day is the movie Passengers. There's that number again, the number three. The day is 821. Eight is the number of new beginnings. 21, the number of days between the Feast of Trumpets and the eighth day of Tabernacles, Shimini Atzeret. The length of time I believe the rapture has been delayed. If you want to understand how this is even possible, you need to read Romans chapter 9. God doesn't need our permission to influence our decision-making. He hardened Pharaoh's heart to go after the Israelites and follow them into the Red Sea. 
He's God. He determines what is good and what is evil. He can do whatever he chooses to do. He knows the future and is involved in the future. He cannot be defeated, something Satan and his followers have failed to understand. One final confirmation. Back in 2022, on my last day of work, I was working from home. I asked the Lord to show me something to let me know if I'm on the right track. I run two computers, my work computer and my home computer. At some point, I begin to look for this black and white mouse, which you see here. This is the only time I've ever had to look for it. It has always been on the desk, always. I spend 15 to 20 minutes looking all over the house for this mouse. I'm totally baffled as to where in the world it could be. I just give up. I won't need it after today anyhow. So I just forget about it, and I keep working for somewhere between half an hour to an hour. I'm working in this very area, so there's no way I can miss seeing the mouse if it's here. I go upstairs to get something to eat. I come back down, and there it is, exactly as you see it. I'd forgotten about the mouse and that I had asked God to show me something. The first thought that pops into my mind is that somebody's playing a joke on me. Who did this? Then I realize I'm alone. No one's here. Then I remember what I asked God. I take two photos. The second photo is the one you see here. It's the 777th photo in the photo folder on my phone. If you add the three sevens up, you get 21. We are looking at the 21st day after the Feast of Trumpets for the rapture. The way things are arranged appears to tell a story, a pictographic story like the heavens and the original Hebrew alphabet. The story is revealed to me by the Holy Spirit over a period of more than a year. Over time, I was told to find blood moons. I find them, one here, one here, and two here. A little later, I'm told to open the napkin. That's the final key. Contained within the napkin are four blood moons. I'm then told to overlay the images on the eclipse chart. The first thing I notice, the symbols representing the blood moons on the napkin align with the blood moon tetrad. On the other side of the Revelation 12 sign are three blood moons. The other symbols of the blood moons on the desk are the red bulb and the two red disks. In between the blood moons in the heavens is the Revelation 12 sign, the story of the rapture and escape from the dragon. On the desk between the blood moons is the story of the rapture, which I'll cover in a minute. So where are the two solar eclipses? This eclipse you see here is on the tape measure. And the second eclipse, the eclipse in Gemini, is symbolized by the black disk you see here, just like the red disks that symbolize the blood moons. The story on the desk in the middle between the blood moons is the story of the rapture, just like the Revelation 12 sign. In the heavens, the symbol of the Christian is Pisces, two fish. On the desk, the two mice. At the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first, then we who are alive. The pen is to the right of the mice and in line with the Christmas tree. At the rapture, we meet with Christ in the air. The Christmas tree symbolizes Christ. The pen is pointing up. At the rapture, we go up. The pen points directly at a seven-compartment pillbox. We will be gone for seven years. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. The pillbox is pressed against a white box, representing the wedding chamber, the hoopah. Inside the white box is a blood pressure cuff. Those protected by the blood of the Lamb, the Christian, will be with Christ in the wedding chamber, heaven, during the seven-year tribulation. The water glass represents the sea. In the heavens, the fish, the symbol of the Christian, and the dragon, a sea serpent, live in the sea. The snowflakes on the glass represent the third of the angels who are cast out of heaven and thrown down to the earth, along with the red dragon, Satan. What the story on the desk is telling me that this series of eclipses has everything to do with the rapture and that our departure is very soon. If we are still here after Shimini Atzeret, it just means there's probably something I've missed and it has yet to be revealed. And then we just wait. That's how it's always worked. We're at the point where the rapture has to happen. And for now, Shimini Atzeret looks like it. Thanks for watching.